Several months ago, we had bought this for my wife. My wife likes to sew. In fact, she uh, sews, uh, volunteer sews for an organization called So Much Comfort, S-E-W, Much Comfort. And uh, they sew adaptive clothing for our injured soldiers who are going through uh, rehabilitation. Uh, she alters clothing uh, based upon the injury they have, and we're very proud of her for that. She does that as a volunteer on a volunteer basis. And she's always had an interest in um, sewing with a singer with a treadle sewing machine. So earlier this summer we came across this at a moving sale. And believe it or not, it's a 1910 Singer Model 66 uh, two-drawer treadle sewing machine. Uh, this one is in Corson Oak, and it needs to be restored. I'm not going to take you step-by-step step through this. If you have any questions on what I do, just refer to the other videos. Uh, I'll put a link right there to part one. The veneer on, on this piece is... I mean, it's down, but it's it's wrinkled, um, very wrinkled. Pretty much any place where there's a natural grain line, uh, it's down and it's humped up around it. And here's the veneer on the left-hand side, and I'm doing my best to show you just how wrinkled this is. You can see it's split here, but it's just every single piece of veneer, wherever there's a natural grain line, is buckled. I've noticed that this wheel here is absolutely frozen solid. And if you take a look inside, let me grab my screwdriver and show you. If you take a look inside, it's just caked with, with junk. You know, this is, uh, you know, fibers off of rugs and animal hair and corrosion. Um, these are put together as follows. There's a pin with a head on it. It's, like a, it's actually like a rivet. And it goes through the cast iron base through the solid steel wheel, through the cast iron base on the other side, and then it's peened over to keep it in place. So to take these off, you really have to grind these, like this head flat, to pull it through, and then to put it back in, if you get a longer one, you push it through, and then you have to put a block or something behind here, a metal block, and then hammer this down, peen it down. Now, the danger that you have whenever you're impacting near cast iron, which can be brittle, is that you could snap off one of these. And if you snap off one of these, you're on your way to a welder who knows how to braze cast iron, or you're going to be looking for another piece on eBay because that's a, you know, that's a uh, repair that not an average guy is going to have the equipment to do or the talent. But anyways, I'm sure that when all this dirt was in here, I believe this base has been repainted. And when all this dirt was in here, whoever repainted it, I think just spray painted right over the dirt. And then, of course, everything corroded and locked up. So what I did is I soaked it with some uh, PB Blaster. I cleaned this out, you know, best I could with a screwdriver to get some of the, the real crud out of there. Sprayed it with PB Blaster. And then gently, we're going to put a pair of channel lock pliers on here. And just see if we can, yeah, there it goes, start to rock this, rock this loose. And I'm in no hurry here to... Uh, to get this to turn 360 we're just going to kind of work it back and forth until we can get it loose and of course if it didn't come loose since we're going to paint this cast iron anyways we would just take some heat uh, to this a propane torch is all you need take some heat to it and it'll break it loose and then just work some lubricant in there and back and forth and back and forth and soon enough it'll it'll break loose so that's what i'm going to do i'm going to, I'm going to spray a little bit more uh, penetrating fluid in there work that around and around and we'll get that so it's uh, it's free because otherwise if someone tries to use the wheels that one's going to drag across the floor and if it's a, a wooden floor you're going to leave a huge scratch mark okay moving on okay I noticed that all that was happening was the uh, the pin was turning in other words the the wheel was stuck on the shaft and the shaft was what was turning so I put some heat on it, and then I put a vice grip across the pin so the pin couldn't move. And then with a pair of pliers, now I've got that loose. So that's now spinning on the shaft. Um, you know, obviously, use care whenever you use heat. But we've, we've got this, uh, this starting to work loose. So I'll lubricate it and keep working it, and uh, we'll have that repaired. 
I think we fixed it. And we're getting ready to pull the frame apart. I just wanted to show you. These are the, the bolts that hold the legs to the cross piece. And the cross piece, of course, is what you mount your treadle assembly to. Uh, these look to be slotted screws. They're actually slotted bolts. And the recommendation is not to use the slotted head because it will deform. And just to put a vice grip around them and break them loose that way. If you look up here on the second mount, uh, this is... A non-original bolt. They must have lost one or broke it. This is a 9 16 regular 9 16 bolt. And here is that bolt. And if you look at the end of it, you can see the threads are galled. And when I went to reinstall this to check it, it got very tight very soon after I threaded it in. And if you look at the threads between it and the original, you can see they're they're not the same. This is a coarser thread pitch than this. I don't have a, a, a thread pitch gauge, but your eye will tell you that there's, there's a difference there. So what happened is someone probably stripped this out trying to get it out the wrong way or broke it. And when they reassembled it, they just grabbed this 9 16 bolt, which was the closest that they had, and just forced it into the hole. Now fortunately they didn't strip the uh, cast iron threads that are inside that assembly, I was able to thread this one into it and, and thread it successfully. So we're going to have to, uh, dis no, we're going to have to, we will be throwing this in the garbage and we'll find a replacement for this. Hopefully I can find one on eBay. Uh, if we do have to use a bolt in the interim, we'll make sure it's the right thread pitch. Now, some of these old bolts and old screws, they're, the thread pitches are kind of, let's say, unique to modern pieces and you may have to do some hunting uh, to figure out but what I do for thread pitch is I just take it to the hardware store and, and run them through their their guides until I find out which one fits them and one of these days I'll get a thread pitch gauge and I won't have to do that but this is the kind of work that you don't want to do uh, particularly you know running a, an improperly threaded bolt into cast iron you can you can cause damage it's going to take uh, you know, you're going to ha actually have to probably drill it out and uh, use a tap and die to re-thread it if you don't crack the cast iron. So this is bad stuff, so we're not going to repeat this. We'll find, a, we'll find the, right, uh, the right bolt and put it in. Okay, we're moving on. And this is the uh, broken vertical support for one of the drawer cases. Uh, you can see it's been re-glued and it was misaligned. If you look at the back, you can see just how far off that is. So what we're going to try to do is uh, heat this up, um, break that glue bond, and see if we can put it together a little better. So here we go. Okay. And she's apart. You can see this thing really shattered when it came apart. But I'm not going to do a, a tremendous amount of scraping to try to get this old glue off because I don't want to lose too much, too much wood. That's step one. Now let's see how we do with step two. I, I gotta do a little puzzle plan here. I'll bring you right back. And we've got this rough back together just with the uh, CA glue and it's lined up much better than it was before. It's just about flush. But there is a lot of missing wood. This break was a shatter. And uh, so we're going to have some sanding and some epoxy filling to do to get this the right way. But right now, at least, it's back together so that when we're done with it, it'll look correct.
Okay, that's the first coat of epoxy putty to fill in the cracks and start to work the shape back. We'll let that set up and then I'll hand sand that and get it smooth. Here's the back. Get those cracks out of there. So between the CA glue and the epoxy, I think we've we've got it certainly structurally. It's uh, it's rock solid and we'll get the uh, we'll get the appearance nailed down with some sandpaper and then down the road a little bit of color. I just got a little quarter inch doll with some sandpaper wrapped around it. And there's how she's coming out. Got a little bit of work to do on the sides here. Smooth that out just a little bit more. The back I'm less concerned with. And uh, then we get some dye stain on there and Maybe some full graining, and you'll never know that that was broken. And remember how, what a mess that was when we started. So, thumbs up. Cool. And here's our repair after a little bit of sanding. You can see that's looking, looking pretty good. I don't even, I don't have any color on that at all. That's, you no, know, that's going to get refinished with the rest of the, rest of the piece. But that looks, that looks really good. And there's our uh, drawer repair mounted back onto the drawer case frame waiting to be uh, colored and refinished with the rest of the project. Look familiar? There's our replacement bolt all the way from Newington, Connecticut. Very, very nice uh, product. Very, very nice packaging. Thank you very much, Mr. Shapiro. I appreciate it. Put that in there. I'll touch that up with a little bit of paint, tighten that up, but we're back in business. Bingo. And this, with no small amount of pleasure, goes in here. Now you may have noticed all that broken veneer in there. Well, I've been waiting for my veneer to show up. I stripped off the veneer off the uh, top and off the lid. And these spots here are wood filler where I'm filling in cracks and gouges. So we have a nice smooth surface after I sand it to layer new veneer on. I remember when I talked about the veneer condition it was in and how it was coming apart at each natural grain line and how I was concerned it would, wouldn't hold up. Look at this. This is what happened to the veneer as soon as it came loose. This would have given us fits when it came time to restore this. You can see just this one little piece here is already in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 individual pieces. And these cracks go all the way down. So this veneer had definitely seen its, its last day and it was the right decision to take it off. I took this off with a heat gun and a scraper, just like I did on the uh, on the other Singer machine. If you're curious how that came off, you can check that video out. There's no sense uh, redoing it again. So we've got the uh, top and the lid ready to go for when our new veneer gets here. The bolt's been taken care of. So as soon as our new veneer gets here and we get that on, we can uh, move forward into refinishing this. Well, hey, I guess we're ready to do the veneer. In your time, it's just been a second or two. In real time, it's been quite a while. It's been about two and a half weeks since I ordered the veneer, and it just came in yesterday. Apparently, it was drop shipped from a mill, God knows where. Uh, it's quarter sawn oak. And if you take a look at it, here it is laid out. And what I guess they did is they just must have peeled a, a, a log about this big and just repeated it. And, and frankly, I don't know if you can see this here or not, but you know this kind of thing where the the knot in exactly the same line, I don't think is is quite what uh, what we had in mind. But I'll be able to avoid that. Uh, there's there's plenty of medullary rays in this wood. Unfortunately, it's all very patterned. I wish they would have staggered the uh, the pieces, but they didn't. But anyways, we'll make do with it. So it's time to 
uh, revenir both the top and the flip lid and I'll just set you up and we'll speed through that. But Okay, we're getting ready to uh, put the veneer on. What I have done is uh, fill in any of the holes, big, big divots, and then sanded this smooth. This is nice and clean. It was then blown off with compressed air. I marked the location of these hinges. You can see here I've extended these lines down onto this piece of blue tape. It's one inch in this direction, one inch in this direction, an inch and a half in that direction with a quarter inch offset. So I wrote that down on the tape. So when I go to cut that out with a uh, a knife after the veneer is on. I'll know where those hinge recesses are. The uh, screw holes I don't have to worry about because the screws for the uh, the flip up hardware and all come in from the bottom so they'll locate off the bottom. So I think we're ready. What we're going to do is as we did before we'll cover both the veneer and the substrate with some DAP contact cement. We let it dry for 15 minutes and then we put it on and uh, and rub it down and we'll trim it back with uh, either a chisel or a razor blade. Uh, I took a look at this inside for using a laminate trim cutter and because the edge is just so rough and in this case angled I'm just not comfortable with that so what I'll probably just do is flip this over like this and then run a razor blade on the inside and any little mistakes that come up on this seam here, which would be our face side, that's going to be um, concealed by the pieces of, of oak framing that go around here. So we're, we're in good shape. You don't have to worry too much about that. So I think we're ready to start putting on contact cement. Okay, here she is. We got some nice quarter sawn oak. The veneer is strongly attached. Trim right up to where it should be, sanded. And remember, this entire inside piece will be covered by trim that screws in from underneath. This here is not a mistake, that's actually a cutout. And there's one here that's just a little bit less deep. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. That's the uh, that's the top done, and all I got to do before I call it quits for tonight is to uh, get the veneer on the uh, on the lid. So I'll get cracking on that. No sense me uh, filming that for you. Uh, I'll bring you back when I start finishing the piece, probably tomorrow. Hey, good morning. It's an absolutely beautiful day here in North Georgia. Temperatures are in the high 50s already it's gonna get up into the 60s had a cold front come through last night rained 
but it is just beautiful this morning. We got work to do. Let's get in that shop. Well, I got up early this morning and got a coat of uh, wiping stain on everything. This is the uh, the top that we re-veneered -re yesterday, and as you can see, there's plenty of medullary rays in the cortisone oak. It's it, it looks very very nice. The uh, the lid is here. That looks nice, and then here is the frame piece that will go up here. Now remember, this had never been stained before, and this hadn't been sanded, and the colors are really very close. The This here is just a little browner, and this is perhaps a little yellower, but that's something that we can take care of with some toner uh, as we go along and refinish this. But uh, so far, I'm very happy with the way this is coming out. And here's our our drawers they've been stained there's that what we call the garage or the case that the sewing machine rests in it's kind of like a dust cover here's the drawer frame and that's been stained and it's dried so we're ready to start putting some some finish on this well if you've been watching the channel at all you know that normally what I do is put a coat or two of uh, lacquer sanding sealer on it, sanding between coats. Then I start shooting coats of lacquer and if the color needs to be adjusted I'll lay color coats on. Those colors are consist of an acetone based dye stain mixed with a little bit of lacquer and a lot of lacquer thinner and then I use that toner to adjust the colors as I need and sometimes I even use a glaze. A glaze is like a thick stain that goes between coat between top coats gives some depth and opacity to the finish but we never know exactly what we're going to have to do until we start so you've seen me do this a thousand times if you've been watching the channel at all particularly if you've watched the first restoration video set of four videos i did on a singer sewing machine you saw that refinishing process so i'm going to go ahead and do that without you just so we don't get tedious if something interesting comes up, I'll bring you back. Otherwise, I'll bring you back when the uh, the project is completed for the befores and afters. So I've got plenty of work to do. i got to drag tables outside so I can uh, shoot lacquer outside on this beautiful day. And then I've got lots of top coats to lay down and color to adjust. So I will see you when I bring you back. Okay, bring you up to speed on where we've been today. We got the, uh, well, we got everything top coated. Two coats of seal coat, two coats of lacquer. And there's the lid. And here's the tabletop. And as you remember, before we started to refinish it, the tabletop was significantly lighter, or appeared to be lighter, than the rest of the trim that goes on at the, the two uh, wooden pieces that surround the opening. Uh, those pieces are here. If you take a look at these, you'll see that inside the grain pits, it's, it's basically black. And again, this was stripped and sanded, but that dark color that's recessed in the wood was what was causing this piece to look lighter than the other piece. So other pieces. So what I did with these after I had them sealed is I applied a black glaze to them and wiped it off the surface and let it stay inside the pits. And what you can see that that did was make this a dead match for these trim pieces. Same thing here. I'm very, very happy with the way that came out. A kind of a subtle refinishing issue, but it made all the difference in the world. So there they are. Here's one of the, the drawer frames. Those are looking great. There's the drawers. They're looking good. The garage. And again, what I did is I sealed and lacquered the inside just so it would look neat. But what was important is the refinishing of the quarter sawn oak on the outside, and that came out beautiful. And then, as you remember, this vertical piece was shattered, and we redid that. And you look at that now, and you can't even tell that's been fixed. So I'm very happy with the results so far. I spent about an hour or so getting the uh, sewing machine cleaned up. Uh, basically flipped it over, it took off access panels. This here, there's uh, one on the back. 
this here and cleaned it and cleaned the inside and cleaned the outside and lubricated it where it needed to be lubricated. Used steel wool, wool and oil to take off some of the corrosion. That uh, copper singer plate is in pretty good shape. You can see here this is the original access panel and it's worn where the, the lady I'm sure had had her wrists resting there and uh, that opens up and closes as does this one here and the machine just operates now that it's been cleaned and lubricated very very smoothly the uh, this machine came with a bobbin attachment I wasn't exactly sure how it worked initially but it was just frozen and you just push it and this wheel goes into this pulley and as you turn it this worm drive gear drives this gear it turns there's an eccentric cam here that moves this back and forth and that's what strings your thread on your bobbin is really ingenious and on the other side here we cleaned up that plate best we could then I shot it with a coat of lacquer so it won't re-corrode and there's the decals on it and we've got wear through the decals here right there the Essen Singer is gone but I suppose and you can also see here how much use this has all of the plating is worn off this presser foot lever from years and years of her hitting it and pushing it down it's kind of cool and then the plate in the front we got that pulled off and cleaned it with steel wool and oil and then I shot a coat of lacquer on it to protect it and reinstalled it after I cleaned everything in there She's all done. Take you once around and then to the before and afters. There she be, 106 years old, and she just had a new birthday. Hey, listen, thanks for uh, sticking with me, and stand by for some before and afters. And we'll see you next time. From just outside Kennesaw here in North Georgia, best regards. Thanks for watching.